SMT Nation, we back. Nation, this article is pretty daggone interesting. Uh, the number, uh, quite impressive, uh, indicating what Verizon and T-Mobile have been able to do in disrupting the home ISP market over just basically the last year or two. You know, it's been a very short while. And since Verizon and T-Mobile started offering 5G home internet, uh, they've been accelerating the number of ads. They, they have completely shaken up the home broadband industry. And I don't think they're done. I think there's more to go. And the numbers that they've already accomplished are impressive. I'll be sure to link this article for you. It'll be in the description. It might be behind a paywall. So uh, definitely keep that in consideration. But I'll put it there for you anyways for the placeholder for the video. Link down in the description. Also in the description, the Real SMT Buy Me a Coffee link. If you want to support your creators directly, that's one way to do it. You can buy us a coffee. There's other ways to support us too. Check them out. They're in the description. Also, there is the Mint Mobile dot com forward slash need partner link if you use it we can help you save money so how does the green fox save you money they give you great deals on their wireless plans the deflation promotion pricing still seems to be active if you use our partner link it also supports the channel in fact switching is super easy they can send you a sim card really quickly or you can activate on eSIM. it's super uh, easy and seamless to do okay so verizon and t-mobile using their 5G home internet broadband service, now control 5% of the U.S. broadband market. When you think about the scale of that, you count the number of customers, that is, just look at the percentage, 5%. It's a number that's impressive for a number of reasons. Number one, big cable serves the most people in the most places, right? The thing about fixed wireless is wherever Verizon and T-Mobile have cell towers, that are upgraded and modernized, they have the potential, you know, to go ahead and sell the 5G home internet to customers. And they've made it really easy. They just ship you a gateway. You don't have to pay for the gateway. You basically just use it while you have the service. And should you decide you want to leave or don't want the service anymore or disconnect, you send it back to them, right? Super easy. You don't need a technician. You don't need somebody drilling in your house. Uh, you know, the typically the reliability is actually pretty good because cell towers have to run in order to support mobile service, right? So you got backup powers at, at cell sites, you know, you've got, um, you know, redundancy and overlap and stuff like that. So there's, there's some perks to it. It's really caught on nicely. Probably the most important thing is pricing. You know, Verizon selling their services for 50, 60 bucks outright uh, with a wireless discount, you can get it down to 25 or 35 bucks. T-Mobile kind of uh, sells it the same way, 50, $60. You, know, you can get a discount with their most premium plans and things like that in auto pay. So the way they've structured it is they've made it quite affordable. And because they already have that existing relationship with customers for wireless, the conversion rate is really good. And now with retention and churn rates starting to drop, customers are more likely to stay with the companies as their networks have gotten more capacitive. The, the 5G networks have gotten more reliable and they've gotten faster and they can service more people. So this kind of is interesting, I think, mostly because, you know, everybody tried to pretend, at least Big Cable, that fixed wireless access was temporary. Fixed wireless access uh, wasn't going to shake up the industry. It clearly has, and it's made a big impact on their business model. In fact, Big Cable between Comcast, you know, Xfinity service, and then Charter with Spectrum, you know, I think they have net losses between the two of them for home broadband. And they'll tell you that fixed wireless access is inferior. And this is just a temporary parking lot for these customers. No, sir, it is not. And I think Verizon and T-Mobile will continue to add customers at the current tune that they have for at least another year. All right, one could argue that maybe another two years where Verizon adds 300,000 or 400,000 customers in a quarter, T-Mobile adds, you know, 500 plus thousand per quarter. And, and I'm talking about doing this for another five or six or seven quarters, potentially. So what, basically, they've been selling these services for about that long. So whatever number of customers they have today, I think Verizon is like 2.3 million. I think T-Mobile is like 4 million or something. They're going to hit their mark, right? They're going to reach their goals. You know, T-Mobile trying to get seven to eight million customers, Verizon trying to get four to five million, I think they get there plus some because big cable still has not addressed the problem, which is a which is explosive pricing. They still have not changed their model. 
they give you a term price, a promotional price, and once it's done, they inflate your bill, you know, to 50% to 100% more. It happened to my brother, in fact. You know, he, he reached out, he said, hey, Spectrum raised my bill by 50%. You know, we went and got him Verizon Home Internet and called it a day. And he's been very satisfied and it's been great for him. And he's paying $25 a month for that internet. Easy as anything. You know, and there's going to be more of that happening. You know, and, and I think, you know, when you look at what Big Cable is doing adding wireless customers, they don't make money on their wireless customers. You know, they, they, in fact, one could argue some of those customers are coming out of pocket if they use a lot of data, you know, and, and I think additionally, a lot of those lines are free. So there's no, there's no money being made on that side of the house. Meanwhile, Verizon and T-Mobile sell their wireless network, make money that way with GoodRPU, and they kind of add icing to the cake by getting them for a second monetization, deepening the customer relationship with more fixed wireless income, right? So this is kind of what I predicted and it's kind of what I expected and Big Cable still yet has not responded. I mean, there may come a day where Verizon and T-Mobile control 10% of the home broadband market. That would not shock me. The service is getting better. The services are getting more reliable. The equipment, the consumer premise equipment, the gateways they send out are getting better. Uh, you know, they, they probably are going to start offering speed tiers, which could potentially enhance services, right? Uh, big cable needs to kind of pay attention to this and and honestly I don't care and you know these companies they don't whatever you know it just doesn't matter in the long long game uh, but I'm just glad we have competition and people actually have some good options now to fight back against cable and DSL and satellite and all those things all right what do you guys think of all these numbers what do you think of my takes love to hear what you have to say on this hashtag Verizon hashtag T-Mobile hashtag FWA uh, love to hear what you guys have to say on this. You're all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.